All right, I think, uh, why don't we start since it's roughly um, four minutes past the hour. So thank you everyone for joining this um, official side event of the um, International Conference for Public Health in Africa, CPHI-8. The actual conference takes place in Lusaka, Zambia for much of the whole of next week in person. And before the conference starts, we're having several uh, side events, uh, both virtual as well as in person. This is one of the virtual events. And once again, thank you for joining this side event. Um, as you've seen in the title of the side event, we'll be talking about real world from the African continent in using existing tools, platforms, and systems and adapting them to promote more comprehensive nurturing care for early childhood development. This uh, side event is very germane because 2018 represents the fifth year, five year anniversary of the launch of the Nurturing Care Framework. As you all know, the Nurturing Care Framework was launched at the World Health Assembly in 2018 and it marks a significant departure from what we basically accepted was business as usual, which for a variety of reasons focused a lot on maternal and child survival, given the egregiously poor indicators in these areas. In fact, as you know, in the Millennium Development Goals, there was a lot of focus on child survival, but there was no explicit focus on children thriving and reaching their full potential in life. We saw this changing somewhat in the Sustainable Development Goals, which talk about the need for children to reach their developmental potential in life. But once again, the focus was more from an education perspective and less holistic nurturing care. So in many ways, the nurturing care framework marks a significant and very encouraging departure in the right direction. And since the launch of the Nurturing Care Framework, so much has happened. So for example, um, I'll just give a few um, random um, examples that, uh, that I've noted down. We're starting to see an explicit recognition of the need to promote child development in global guidelines. To cite two examples, we have the new guidelines on um, the new guidelines on complementary feeding, which for the first time include responsive feeding. We have management of acute malnutrition, which recognizes that young children, children under the age of six months, who should not be taking any solids other than, um, or, or rather should not be taking any foods other than mother's milk, breast milk, they need more than um, a, a, a treatment like a therapeutic supplement to um, help them recover from malnutrition. MAMI, as it is known, is all about providing children with nurturing care and supporting their caregivers. We have seen donors like USAID investing in assets such as the addendum, the responsive caregiving and early learning addendum into the infant and young child feeding counseling cards, the whole package, which have been tested in at least two settings in Ghana and the Kyrgyz Republic and the results have been very encouraging. And we're seeing more and more examples of such integration into packages and assets being used for implementation. We have the World Bank leading an effort to invest in childcare, $180 million initiative lasting over five years and bringing together a constellation of partners to invest in childcare. Just to remind us all, the nurturing care framework has five domains, health, nutrition, safety and security, responsive caregiving, and early learning. Together, these five domains are prerequisites for ensuring that children develop optimally and reach their full developmental potential in life. However, as we know, in spite of this excitement, in spite of the global guidance that's coming out, there are still some weaknesses in the implementation of integrated services that incorporate the responsive caregiving and early learning components at scale, which is why this side event is particularly exciting because we will be sharing three very germane examples of scaling up of such services 
which have gone, gone beyond the level of pilots to achieve population level scale in three significant geographies. Today's session will be facilitated by a dear colleague of mine who, had, who I've had the pleasure of knowing for many years now. Dr. Martin Chabi Joseph currently works for the WHO in Abuja, Nigeria. I had the pleasure of knowing him when he was based here in Kenya, where I'm currently um, dialing in from. Dr. Chabi is a pediatrician and child health specialist with um, over two decades, uh, 24 years of experience in many clinical roles, program implementation, strategy, policy development roles, as well as leadership and coordination. And he's also a master trainer in care for child development and has led the training and implementation of many other such packages. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Dr. Chabi to facilitate today's session. And I once again, welcome you all to this official side event of the Conference of Public Health in Africa and look forward to hearing from our three amazing presenters about the great work that they have been leading in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Mozambique. Over to you, Dr. Shabi. Hi, Dr. Chabi, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Dejit, for really setting the pace for the, this interesting conversation, where we are actually going to look at real world practical examples of how some countries have translated the nurturing care framework for early child development, which, as uh, Dejit said, was launched in the World Health Assembly in 2018. And if you recall, some of, of us who are also participated in our own regional Africa launch of this uh, framework in Nairobi, Kenya, which was quite high level, presided over by the then Kenya president, His Excellency uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, the GIT has mentioned the five components of this uh, caring and nurturing care for early child uh, uh, framework. And um, the framework goes ahead to say what we expect out of these components to translate in enhancing early child development for the child to thrive and grow. Um, also to mention this year, there was the launch of the Nurturing uh, Practice Guide, which is again trying to uh, guide on how we can strengthen our systems at, for nurturing care for both health and nutrition. Uh, part of this uh, new document lays emphasis on caring for the caregiver. If you notice the five components, although they mention the caregiver as the center, of that uh, service delivery, this uh, guide also puts emphasis on caring for the caregiver. And we'll hear from one of the examples how they're really using existing touch points to reach the caregiver and support their capacity. So uh, to uh, go into our uh, presentations, we'll start with uh, Kenya. And uh, from Kenya, we are privileged today to have a public health specialist uh, who is currently working as the County Director of Health in one of the 47 counties, Siaya County. He's a holder of a master's degree in both public health and community health and development, and a basic degree in environmental health sciences. He's uh, currently pursuing a PhD in public health with a focus on aspects of community health that enhance healthy living. He has built his skills around community health over many years of experience, working with multiple organizations, uh, most recently, he was working with the Minister of Health and uh, Sanitation in Kenya. He's a firm believer in the importance of traveling to communities and engaging directly with the people on the ground to understand their needs and then develop solutions to address those needs. Uh, these include delivery of developmental and monitoring and counseling as part of routine health services uh, so that we can promote more comprehensive natural care for early child development. So, uh, from Kenya, we hear from Kennedy Odiambo Oruenjo, who have just um, given his bio. Uh, welcome, and uh, we'll be talking about optimizing existing tools to deliver nurturing care for early child development through health services. Uh, he will focus on a human-centered design around maternal 
and child health handbook. Ken, over to you, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chabi, for that uh, introduction. Uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and good morning to those who are still early in the morning. As has been mentioned, my name is Kennedy Odiambo Wenjo, the Director of Public Health uh, from Siaya County. That's one of the 47 counties uh, in Kenya. I would like to uh, take you through, of course, how we can be able to optimize the use of uh, the maternal child health booklet as one key aspect to be able to enhance caregiving uh, to the uh, caregivers within uh, uh, the county. So this is a human-centered design around maternal and child health uh, hand booklet. Uh, the book you can see in your screen, uh, according to the Kenyan uh, uh, Ministry of Health, it is uh, MOH216. Next slide. Uh, as uh, the slide is coming, uh, just to understand this, uh, is that this particular booklet is very key when it comes to uh, caregiving for the child, and it's normally given to each and every mother at uh, antenatal clinic. So uh, around 2002 to 2023, uh, we, we together with the PATH, uh, of course, came up with the human centered design uh, just to be able to see how counseling using this particular booklet is important to support, of course, developmental milestones and also uh, how it is used among the healthcare workers and also the community health promoters who do this at community level. So one of the key findings was that uh, those low usage of the MCH booklet, uh, most of the times uh, they will just use it for recording, but not really using it for counseling. And this couldn't really announce uh, responsive caregiving. So in the same year, 2023, this year, uh, we did a co-creation workshop and of course came up with certain solutions that are, of course, uh, local solutions that could support the use of this particular booklet and also to use it for, of course, uh, 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 taking through the mothers and counseling the mothers. So to help the CHPs provide better use of this booklet, uh, there were two uh, particular key low-lying foods that we did. One of them was just taking them through, capacity building them uh, on how to be able to use this MCH booklet and of course, development of the SOPs on early childhood development. Next, next slide kindly. Yeah, so just like I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, this particular mother and child booklet is given to uh, the mothers uh, at, uh, of course, their first ANC visits. You know, in Kenya currently, we do eight ANC visits. And then in addition to this booklet, uh, it, it's able to take us through uh, several other aspects of, uh, of course, uh, uh, care to this particular child, uh, fields of nutrition, uh, vaccination records. It also has uh, some counseling notes that should be utilized by both the healthcare worker and, of course, the community health promoter while doing counseling at household level and even at facility level. Next uh, slide, kindly. Now, uh, these two, if you can see uh, from the slides that we, are, we have before you, one is looking at, uh, of course, the developmental milestones that are there, all the way from zero to two months to 24 months. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the other side of the slide talks about, of course, play and communication that are very key as aspects of responsive caregiving. Next. Yeah, now, uh, surprisingly, uh, the use of this particular booklet by providers, uh, according to the findings that uh, were there, is that about 98% of the clients received the booklet at first visit. And then, of course, 41 were not told anything about the, the handbook. 35% were simply told to bring the booklet to every visit. That is the eight visits that I talked about. But only one NC client reported that the provider asked her to read through the booklet and uh, understand what is within the booklet. So then this shows also under utilization of the booklet uh, as it is introduced first to the ANC mother. Next. Now, when looking at now uh, this, the use of this particular booklet at the Child Welf Welfare Clinic, every time uh, a mother uh, has the child and is, is sick, 
when they go to the child welfare clinic, they should be able to carry this booklet so that all the notes are taken through, are taken within that particular booklet as a record to be used uh, in future. So 96% of the caregivers at the CWC reported that the provider asked for their MCH booklet. So when they came in, they were asked, do you have an MCH booklet? But about surprisingly, only 53% of the caregivers responded, reported that uh, the providers were checking or updating their growth monitoring of the immunization records within the booklet. But 28% of the caregivers received no feedback as to what the provider wrote or any reported learning date of, the, of their next appointment. So in this case, the provider will just record uh, the particular findings, the book without communicating to the, to the mother and also without uh, really counseling the mother. So only two, two of the caregivers reported that the provider used the book to counsel them, like taking them through the book because ultimately they utilize this particular book at home in looking at, along this particular developmental milestones. So next, uh, now at household level, in Kenya, we have the community health promoters whose key mandate is to be able to give key messaging at household level. And of these uh, uh, community health uh, uh, promoters, 35 caregivers visited in the last three months reported that 75% uh, the community health asked them about the mother-child booklet. So they were just asking to be able to see if at all they have the booklet. And then most caregivers, about 50% reported the CHP, checking in the handbook if the family had regular clinic visits. So for them, they utilize it to just check if they, they normally go for the regular clinic visits, which are the eight. But only two of the caregivers, that's about 7%, reported that the CHP used the handbook for counseling. So again, this shows us that primarily this book is just used for checking if there's that regular clinic visits. Next. Now, uh, almost no providers, of course, at the NC, at CWC, or during the household visits, use this MCH booklet for counseling. And this, uh, of course, became uh, a real, a real issue for us because ideally, ideally, it should be used for counseling. Next. Now, uh, this book is very key on especially monitoring of developmental milestones. And uh, at at CWC, seventy four percent of the caregivers, of course, and uh, received developmental milestone counseling. But then uh, only 39% of these caregivers uh, received that from the CHP who checked the, 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 the developmental milestones at household visits during the key uh, household visits that they normally do to make sure that, uh, of course, uh, this is followed. So additionally, only 11% of caregivers reported the MCH handbook as the source of their knowledge on developmental mi milestones. So that means the caregivers are not very keen on the knowledge that is there based on the fact that uh, they have not been taken through uh, embracing the use of this particular booklet. Next. Now, counseling on ECD uh, in ANC and maternity is key. And uh, this particular booklet recommends that for child development uh, from pregnancy, uh, it is important for us to be able to play communicate, and this is shown both in, in, in write-ups and also in, 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 of course, pictorials. But uh, in the study, however, only 35% of, uh, of, of, of ANC clients reported being cancelled on ECD. Uh, that is talking to unborn baby uh, before birth. Uh, only 35% of the mothers reported receiving, again, cancelling about talking to their newborns. 24% uh, of the caregivers at CWC reported being cancelled on child development, and only 28% of the caregivers reported being cancelled on child development during the, the household visits that are done by community health promoters. So additionally, about only 3% of the caregivers reported the MCH booklet as the source of their knowledge on play and communication with children, because most of them were just reporting uh, maybe uh, from other caregivers, getting knowledge from other caregivers of what they need to, to do, and also getting knowledge from other quarters and not really through the use of the booklet. Next. 
Now, uh, the solutions for this, and uh, within this, we are looking at the low-lying uh, fruits. So then one of the things that happened is that there was a co-creation to be able to increase, to improve now the use of this booklet. Now that it had more information that will support, of course, nurturing care for early childhood development. So the first solution was to have an explicit training of healthcare workers and uh, community health promoters on, of course, the MCH booklet. And then, of course, the second solution was to develop SOPs on, of course, early childhood development. Next. So to improve training, uh, there's a package that was uh, developed for updated for the healthcare worker and also the community health promoters. And this particular package will include checking for prior use of the knowledge on MCH handbook, uh, reviewing systematic key MCH handbooks with contents with providers and the CHPs, because ideally this should be a counseling process whereby uh, uh, the community health promoter or the healthcare provider will talk to the caregiver on a one-on-one -on -one basis and also feel the particular challenges that they have as they work together towards improving uh, the use of that particular booklet. And then of course, there was a role play scenarios on maternal and child health, nutrition, and also child development, which are key just to be able to uh, make them uh, memorize uh, what they need to do when they're at, at home. And then, of course, practices the use of the MCH booklet in a household visit or child consultation was also key, and you can see this within the picture. Next. So the SOPs for the ECD. Uh, the SOPs, uh, of course, is a visual summary of what to monitor and counsel on with regard to the ECD, the early childhood development. So it is organized uh, from pregnancy to age five. And you can see during pregnancy what you need to do, what we need to ask, observe, tell, and also how to be able to practice by using this. So it links also the specific MCH handbook uh, pages, indicates healthcare worker and also healthcare promoter, the community health promoter tasks in line with what is feasible. And then of course, it's also modeled in such a way that the uh, integrated management of childhood illnesses, uh, but with focus on also counseling asking questions, observing, telling, and also practice. So it's like a counseling process whereby uh, you, you both have to listen to the caregiver or the pregnant mother, and also have to listen to these professionals on uh, the particular advice that they give. Next. So additionally to the SOPs, uh, it also indicates, it, it indicates a recommended frequency of household visits uh, from pregnancy to to of course uh, age five, and, and of course these are priority visits uh, because the mother has the booklet and uh, during this particular time they are uh, of course seen as vulnerable. So there's need for that constant uh, monitoring so as to be able to make sure that there's clear developmental milestones. And then it orients on signs of the depression and of course what to do uh, during this particular time. It also reinforces the counseling on nutrition aspects. Next. So uh, some of the early experiences with the training and the SOP, uh, early successes is that, uh, of course, both the community health promoter and the healthcare providers uh, like to use the ECD SOP as it simplifies their work on what to observe, the key messages to share, and then, of course, activity to help caregiver practice. So with the SOPs, then it gives like a one-on-one -on -one guide on what steps you need to follow next. And this, of course, makes it uh, easier to use. And then, of course, uh, early suspected delays, uh, detections are done. And this has improved both at facility and also level. Though the healthcare promoters are uh, now utilizing the book, especially if you look at now the page 25 of this MCH booklet uh, on aspects of service delivery, uh, there's clear mentorship because this can be uh, documented through the, the number of entries that are sampled. Now, healthcare workers are provided uh, providing targeted nurturing care for early childhood development messaging guided by the ECD SOPs within the touch points. So this is a, this can be noticed, of course, in the increase uh, in caregiver awareness regarding the specific sections of the mother-child booklet. So they can be able to take you through what needs to happen at each particular stage. And this will, of course, clearly show some progress. 
And then, of course, children at household level became also excited during the CHP visit because they get the practice, get to practice the activities in the SOPs together with the CHP. So some of the early challenges, uh, the advanced age, uh, of course, of the community health volunteers. Uh, ideally, they were before they were referred to as community health promoters, they were community health volunteers. And being a voluntary job, most of the age bracket uh, were above 50, above 60. So then they got some clear challenges on, uh, of course, uh, being able to understand the SOPs. And this, of course, resulted in population uh, difficulties. And then certain uh, community health promoters occasionally encounter confusion when uh, they are confronting the households. This is when they are utilizing this particular book to take the caregivers through. Then you get people who are able to ask some other questions. And this will maybe uh, throw them to confusion. And then the strategic, uh, what has been used to be able to cure that is, uh, of course, pairing them up uh, with the, those who are more proficient uh, counterparts so that this will be able to help them focus on giving this particular information. And then, of course, there are influx of caregivers on specific days as it resulted in the increase in the workloads among healthcare promoters and also uh, healthcare workers and also uh, contributes to longer waiting hours for caregivers. So this has impacted the efficiency of the overall service delivery because at times we normally uh, ask them to come on certain days because these are presumed to be clinic days. So when they come on the same clinic days, then you get a bigger number uh, of people. And uh, when you look at the HRH, uh, we are having, of course, some critical gaps on uh, the numbers. Next. So what are the next steps uh, in this is to be able to working together with, uh, of course, PATH. We are currently testing these solutions by observing and uh, mentoring providers who implement them. Uh, it is work in progress. And then, of course, uh, there'll be an end line data which will be collected uh, about uh, maybe the, the last week of this month and December. And this, of course, will provide more information on whether the use of this uh, MCH booklet and SOPs has improved. And that, that will be interesting to, to look at because then it will also give us a breakthrough on what we need to do moving forward. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, back to you, uh, Dr. Chabi. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ken, for that uh, elaborate uh, presentation. A very good example of an existing tool that is very rich in almost all the components of nurturing care, whether you're looking at good health immunization, whether you're looking at the adequate nutrition aspect, uh, age-appropriate playing uh, suggestions, counseling uh, tools, but such to see that it is rarely used in all the touch points you mentioned, as you said. So this intervention to try and promote that use uh, is quite an interesting one, and we'll also be interested for you to share the outcome after these in interventions to see uh, really how that improvement will translate into better results in terms of nurturing care. So uh, just to mention that uh, for questions, we have a question and answer hub in, the, in your Zoom uh, app. So please feel free to go there and post the questions you have. We'll take all the questions at the end of the, of, of the three presentations. We also have interpretation, uh, especially one of our presentation, which will be in Portuguese. So we have English and Portuguese interpretation. Please go to that tab on interpretation and select whether you want to listen in English or whether you want to listen in Portuguese. And remember, if uh, at the end of this, if you just want to listen in the original language, remember to manually go back to the original language. Also, uh, encouraging everybody to use the chat to introduce yourself. And if you have any comments as the presentation are ongoing, please uh, use the chat uh, to post your comments. Remember to share them with everybody so that you can all see what you are commenting about. So. Uh, from Kenya, let's move to the neighboring uh, Ethiopia, uh, where we are pleased to introduce Sintu Mekoria, who is the Director of Reproductive, Maternal, Newborn, and Child Directorate within the Addis Ababa City Administration Health Bureau. 
uh, her current position uh, in her current position she is also the lead of early child development activities within the health bureau she possesses a degree in public health and human nutrition so from Ethiopia we are going to hear about scaling up ECD interventions in routine maternal newborn child health and nutrition services in Addis Ababa uh, Sindhu you are welcome please the floor is yours Thank you, Travi. I think my video is uh, cannot work. I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please just proceed yeah. with the session. Okay, Thanks. I'm trying to display my video, but it is not working. Maybe the host can help me. I proceed with the presentation, Sindhu. Okay. Thank you. Please display the slides, the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as Chavi introduced me, I'm Senator from uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, currently. I'm trying to address in the going present uh, our ECD scale up uh, intervention on the routine MCH program in the nutrition service in Addis Ababa. So I'm going to uh, display some pointers from the background. Uh, Addis Ababa city government is currently implementing a, com a comprehensive multi-sectoral uh, ECD intervention program. Uh, by logo of children, the future hope of Addis Ababa uh, early childhood development initiative, and uh, it is main uh, goal are deliver the package of the evidence based ECD service to uh, special vulnerable families and the children, uh, which is uh, provide universal access to the ECD program by 2025 through implementing by this nine strategic uh, initi strategic initiatives. So currently, these nine strategic initiatives are implementing our, our, our city uh, administration government from all collaborative uh, sectors. Next slide, please. Uh, when we come to see developing intervention uh, package uh, on the ECD, uh, from uh, 2019 up to 2022, the Ministry of Health uh, lead the ECD technical working group adapting this ECD program uh, by giving uh, and planning the training package and uh, adopted the jo job aid materials for integrate the MCH program, uh, especially the five uh, touch points, antenatal, postnatal, Gross monitoring and nutrition service, and also sick child service in the waiting room. This is our touch point for those eligible uh, ECD program service uh, gaining targets. So uh, when uh, we see the, these packages, we can see from these uh, websites from uh, the websites, the websites, we can get the job aids materials, training manuals in the other poster for supporting the ECD program accordingly. And as well as the PAS is provided technical support for our city administration, especially uh, adopting the, the package of uh, Global Care for the Child Development Package, uh, that is, uh, which will be adoption our from WHO and the UNICEF and from other health sector experience from other uh, countries like Kenya and Mozambique. Next slide. When we see uh, uh, the implementing status are especially on the capacity building for health care providers and the health workforce, as we see uh, currently we are working uh, two uh, service strategy modalities. That means the facility levels and the, the others are community levels ECD workers working. So when we see the uh, facility level, 
we are currently uh, giving the capacity building or in-service training about uh, 3,000 health service uh, providers and including health extension workers, that means uh, uh, which are engaging the community health program. So uh, from 101 health center, total of uh, around uh, 3,000 health service providers are uh, conducting or taking the ECD uh, comprehensive training in the uh, the next one is the the new approach are implementing from 2023 uh, on the community level is in working activity. That means currently we have 2,500 new workforce are trained by level two the ECD uh, approach and they are currently deployed at the community block level. So when we come to the other uh, capacity uh, building uh, modalities or intervention, the others are mentorship and uh, uh, ongoing <coughs> coaching service. So uh, we are currently conducting the mentor mentoring session, especially uh, regular uh, mentorship for trainers, mentors, and uh, that is followed by quarterly supportive supervision and then we are uh, after supervision we are giving the feedback accordingly as we see from the both pictures uh, the the first picture are displaying the capacity building for health care providers at the job on job uh, site training so as we see from the picture health service providers are taking on job training uh, from the uh, trainers. So the next uh, pictures are uh, when we can see from uh, technical uh, assistants are supporting and uh, ongoing uh, mentoring are conducted from regular regularly accordingly. Next slide. When we see uh, the making the health facilities are convenient for those. Uh, communities and the eligible targets. When we see from the pictures, uh, health, work, health workforce are engaged in the creating attractive environment for uh, health facility environment for eligible for ECD service by painting the room, decorating and the making play items that are familiar with uh, easily uh, accessible and easily reproduced at home. So we can see from the picture, uh, healthcare providers are uh, painting by herself and uh, decorating the child-friendly uh, rooms and uh, by making the service are uh, child-friendly. And when we see the other picture, uh, currently families are uh, easily accessible for those uh, play uh, box materials and uh, other uh, items easily reproduce at home. So this is our uh, sample picture to display our intervention. Next slide. When we see the delivery modalities for uh, early childhood development by monitoring in, in the counseling, as I earlier mentioned, Currently, we have five touch points on our MCH program. So we, when we are seeing the health facilities are providing basic monitoring of the childhood development milestone at the EPI program, immunization program, growth monitoring in the promotion or nutrition room in the sick child service. So uh, when the service <coughs> are provided by a standard development monitoring tool and the kit and that they are giving based on the standard protocol and the tool. Uh, when we come to the mothers and the, the postnatal uh, care, the health facilities also provide individual counseling after uh, the mother are giving birth, that means but during the postpartum time, how to uh, take their responsibility on responsive care or learn in the early learning in the, the EPI nutrition in the integrated uh, management of newborn and childhood program is one of the touch points to address those 
uh, counseling in the responsive care of the early childhood development. Next slide. So when we see from the picture, uh, our health facilities has their own playbooks session are conducted at uh, based on the picture. So the health care providers has their own regular uh, appointment during every day. So they are uh, conducting playbook session at every day and they are registered how many clients are attending on those and how many children are attending on those uh, playbook session every day. And they are counseling and giving education about how to uh, caregivers are, how to learn in the play, uh, practice playing with their children and how to uh, practically make those uh, playing materials. And when we, we come to the parental coaching or the community level ECD work, as we see from the picture, every household levels are categorized by uh, ECD eligible criteria. So health extension workers and our family health teams are well trained on the how to uh, make the parental coaching and how to provide the parents coaching do, during home visit in the other community and the level activities to promote nurturing care practice. Next slide. When we come to the strategies that supported uh, to the scale up of the integrated ECD service. Next slide. So when we see uh, there are a lot of strategies are implementing uh, to sustain this ECD program as a city government level. That means multi-sectoral ECD program are budgeted by government in the need by the office of the mayor office of Addis Ababa city. That means currently ECD are owned by uh, the city administration mayor office, Her Excellency. And the, the other strategies are, strategies are affairs office established in the city administration, that means under the mayor of, the needing part are under the, the mayor of and the coordination of the multi-sector ECD program in the city. In line with these sectors such as health, other sectors, women, children in the social affairs, education bureau and other implementing sectors are planning and implementing of their respective components of the ECD program. And another thing that the city administration uh, are, are <clears throat> designing the technical working group to monitor and support the program implementation. And the other thing that the task force are led by the, P the deputy uh, city mayor, it is leading, but the leading part are mostly uh, evaluating by steering committee committee of the, DP, the deputy city mayor and the, the support and the follow up from the national government in line ministry office. As we see from the picture, our mayors, Her Excellency Dr. Adani Chaba, they are visiting our health center and the, the commitment and the, the ownership are totally led by uh, our mayor office uh, steering committee. Next slide. When uh, we see the coordination and the co collaboration uh, part of uh, the ECD program, there are uh, a lot of uh, implementing sector. That means the government sectors are implementing uh, the ECD program with the Bureau of Health, so women, children in the social affairs, education sector, Bureau of Urban uh, Verification and the Green Development in the health sectors are mostly integrated and in collaborating to uh, scale up this ECT program. Uh, when we come to the partnership program, here uh, displayed partners or uh, then governmental organization are supporting this in the ECD program as city level, Big Win, Paz, Vernon, Van Nair Foundation, and the Van Nair Family Foundation are the most supporting and uh, coordinating 
partners to scale up the ECD program. Next slide. As, as we know, uh, the, as a country, there are a lot of uh, the national uh, strategic plan for the health system, but the ECD are the one of the most, the most attentionable uh, program. So we can see uh, there are a lot of policy in the implementing strategic documents are currently prepared in the, at the work. So we can see the multi sector and ECD policy framework are developed. The national the health sector strategic plan for the ECD are currently implementing and, <clears throat> and the ECD including planning resource mapping and performance review. And currently the program are uh, monitored by the national health information and uh, management system. That means that that has their own data element in the generating the reports are every month. So we can uh, we are currently implementing the program by policy based and the document based. Next slide. So uh, based on the capacity building and the, the capacity building and the facility need quality improvement as uh, trained trainers are, that means health service provider uh, provide support in the step-by-step -step training are cascaded based on the job aids and the standard tool and the, the other health facility directors and the, the ECD focus are coordinating and oversaw the integration of the ECD program at every MCH touch points and the allocating the staff to uh, play session in the waiting room, uh, waiting area or waiting room and the allocation of budget for making the facility more child friendly and the routine facility staff meeting included. That means discussion of the ECD service delivery is one of the agenda for every uh, quality improvement discussion. The city health bureaus and the subsidy health facility managers conducted the post-training mentorship. That means uh, every month th there will be a uh, facility-based mentorship are uh, conducted, quarterly supportive supervision are conducted, and already uh, feedbacks are given uh, regularly. So uh, when uh, we, when we are conducting this program, uh, most NIPAs are supported with the development and the, the provision of guidelines. They are supporting trainings, materials, and job aids, as well as training, mentoring, and uh, data visualization in other technical support, as well as uh, the, we have the technical assistance on the, this ECD program intervention. Next slide. Thank you very much. I'm trying to display our uh, city administration ECD uh, program. Uh, Chavi, back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sindhu, for really elaborating a good example again from the nurturing care framework of how we can take an existing touch point, the maternal, newborn, child health services within the health service delivery and enhance them to be able to provide services that are linked to the early child development. So thank you so much for that uh, example, and also bringing out the other aspect of uh, that the, F, uh, the framework emphasizes on a multi-sectoral approach. Uh, we have seen how you are integrating with the education sector, with the children affairs and other sectors, including having these in the ECD national strategy. So thank you so much for that uh, example. Again, uh, just to remind, put your questions under the Q&A. We'll address them at the end of the third presentation, which we are going into, uh, reminding you that this presentation will be taken in Portuguese. We have interpretation. So please, you can select the English if you will not be able to follow it up in uh, Portuguese. Uh, the next presenter, as I've alluded to, is from uh, Mozambique. And uh, this is Ala Sandega. This is the head of the child health section within the Department of Maternal and Child Health at the Ministry of Health in Mozambique. She's also the early childhood development focal person. She holds a master's of public health degree 
with focus on planning, monitoring, and evaluation. She has previously worked as head nurse in the pediatric wards of Tete and Nakala hospitals and the build capacity of numerous healthcare workers through structured mentoring and supervision. She's also a graduate of science of ECD course offered by the Aga Khan University Institute for Human Development. So from Mozambique, we are going to hear an example of um, existing health, how they've used existing health services to reinforce nurturing care for early child development. And they are going to be demonstrating results from a human center design study which was done in Monapo district, Nampula in Mozambique. Ala, the floor is yours. Muito obrigada, Dr. Chave, for direito a apresentar. Então, eu vou passar aqui a apresentar aquilo que são a utilização das portas de entrada de serviços de saúde para reforçar aquilo que são os cuidados integrados de desenvolvimento da primeira infância em Moçambique, especificamente nos aspectos relacionados ao aconselhamento para os ao aconselhamento a nível do desenvolvimento. Como contextualização, importa referir que em Moçambique a promoção dos cuidados integrados da primeira infância estão mencionados em vários documentos normativos a destacar aqui as normas de atendimento à criança sadia, à criança em risco, as normas referentes àquilo que são a reabilitação nutricional e o pacote de intervenções comunitárias que são muitas das vezes relegadas aos agentes comunitários de saúde. Por outro lado, next slide, please. Por outro lado, importa aqui referir que os dados do Programa de Desenvolvimento da Primeira Infância têm demonstrado uma melhoria significativa das competências dos provedores de saúde para realizar a monitoria do desenvolvimento psicomotor nas unidades sanitárias e o aconselhamento em desenvolvimento da primeira infância, muito depois da sua prévia formação e seguimento. No entanto, uma avaliação efetuada pela Escola de Saúde Pública de Avart em 2021 no país, em Moçambique, sobre a integração dos cuidados de desenvolvimento da primeira infância, mostrou que metade dos utentes que frequentavam essas consultas infantis a nível das unidades sanitárias declararam ter recebido esses serviços, especialmente aqueles que são os serviços, os cuidados responsivos eh, de aprendizagem e aprendizagem precoce. Como nós vimos no início, a eh, os cuidados integrados de desenvolvimento da primeira infância incluem cinco componentes, portanto, houveram lacunas nesta avaliação correspondentes àquilo que são o aconselhamento sobre os cuidados responsivos e a aprendizagem precoce. Ainda nesta avaliação, mostrou que também a elevada carga de trabalho e a fraca motivação dos provedores contribuíram para como obstáculos para este aconselhamento. Next slide, please. Perante estas contratações, em 2022, o Ministério da Saúde, com apoio do parceiro APAT, iniciaram um desenho do estudo centrado no ser humano, por forma a fechar essas lacunas, especialmente naquilo que são as duas as componentes aqui mencionadas, com o objetivo de compreender quais os pontos de contato mais adequados que podem providenciar os serviços de aconselhamento e desenvolvimento infantil a nível da unidade sanitária, principalmente nos serviços de materna, saúde materna ou neonatal infantil. E também era a preocupação identificar quais são os fatores que podem ajudar ou dificultar este mesmo aconselhamento. Esse estudo foi realizado em Monapo, um distrito da província de Nampula, teve a duração aproximadamente de nove meses, e participaram do estudo desde o pessoal de nível central, neste caso o pessoal de saúde do Ministério da Saúde, dos serviços provinciais de saúde de Nampula, dos serviços distritais de saúde de Monapo, e foram incluídas três unidades sanitárias deste distrito de Monapo, incluindo os seus provedores e os utentes. Next slide. Qual foi a metodologia usada para a realização deste estudo? Utilizou-se, como falei anteriormente, a metodologia do estudo centrado no ser humano, 
e este compreendeu quatro chaves principais do estudo. A primeira chave, neste caso, a, chave, a, a fase de descoberta, foi a fase onde foram realizadas observações destes serviços providenciados a nível das unidades sanitárias e foram conduzidas também entrevistas semi-estruturadas a esses provedores de saúde, incluindo os seus utentes e os cuidadores. A segunda fase uh, foi a fase que compreendeu a análise dos dados que foram uh, recolhidos na primeira fase, fez o desenvolvimento dos perfis de provedores, assim como de seus cuidadores ou utentes, e também foi definido as questões chaves para o desenho dessas soluções para o aconselhamento. A terceira fase, chamada também a fase do sonho, foi necessário fazer oficinas de criações com os provedores para identificar e criar soluções viáveis a, a nível destas unidades sanitárias uh, aqui uh, introduzidas para o estudo, por forma a reforçar este aconselhamento em desenvolvimento da primeira fase. E a última fase, que neste caso é a quarta fase, depois desta uh, cocriação de soluções, que foi -se a, a fase de elaboração, de testagem destas mesmas uh, soluções, sumarização e também nesta fase foram uh, elaboradas algumas ferramentas, incluindo os pacotes de formação para acompanhar este processo de implementação. A seguir, next. Uma das portas de entrada identificada pelos provedores nas oficinas de cocriação como sendo viáveis para reforçar o aconselhamento foi o setor da maternidade. E muitos aspectos pesaram para esta indicação deste setor por se verificar que naquela região, maior pareamente as maternidades que foram selecionadas, quase 70% das mulheres, das mulheres davam o parto nestas unidades sanitárias. E após uh, o parto destas unidades sanitárias, normalmente elas ficam por um período uh, de pelo menos 24 horas antes de terem alta. Então, este aspecto é coadjuvado com o aspecto de, normalmente, nessas mulheres, quando se dirigem à maternidade, estarem sempre acompanhadas de um familiar, normalmente a sogra ou a tia ou a cunhada. Então, também com favoreceu a necessidade de se identificar este lugar que por forma que houvesse uma oportunidade para fazer-se este aconselhamento. E também foi-se usar, usar este setor como indicado para fazer o aconselhamento, reforçar, neste caso, o aconselhamento para o desenvolvimento da primeira infância, pelo fato de, nestas maternidades, as enfermeiras, por rotina, já fazerem algum aconselhamento às mulheres depois do parto, principalmente aquele aconselhamento que é relegado para o aleitamento materno exclusivo e o correto posicionamento destas crianças perante as mais reformas, aquelas sejam reforçadas para que providencie esse serviço. Então, neste momento também surge uma oportunidade para elas fazerem este reforço de aconselhamento em desenvolvimento da primeira infância. Next slide, please. Portanto, uma vez identificadas a maternidade como um dos setores viáveis para reforçar este aconselhamento, principalmente aquela lacuna que tem a ver com os cuidados responsivos e a aprendizagem precoce, foi criada uma solução em que a mesma foi dividida em três partes neste setor, por forma a, a, a promover este aconselhamento. A primeira parte identificada foi uh, na sala de parto, que consistia em, na altura de colocar o depois do nascimento, o recém-nascido pela pele com a mãe, que pudessem pedir à mãe que cumprimentasse e falasse com o seu bebê, uma forma de eh, incorporar alguns aspectos sobre o desenvolvimento da primeira infância. E a segunda parte, ainda na maternidade, foi uma hora após o parto, verificar e aconselhar sobre o alitamento materno exclusivo e aproveitar esta oportunidade também para explicar à mãe a necessidade de ela iniciar também a conversar com o seu bebê e sem nos esquecer que ambas estas práticas devem estar sempre acompanhadas de informações das vantagens das mesmas, por forma que as mulheres também estejam mais motivadas a praticar. 
E a última parte que foi identificada como uma forma de introduzir aspectos para melhorar esta componente de desenvolvimento da primeira infância, uma vez que já tinha dito anteriormente que elas muitas das vezes vão à unidade sanitária acompanhadas, que aproveitassem esta oportunidade, neste caso a enfermeira, em fazer umas sessões de aconselhamento em grupo, onde participassem também os acompanhantes, explicassem, além daqueles que são os cuidados que têm a ver com o bebê e a mulher após o parto, reforçar a necessidade de praticar a conversa com o recém-nascido. E também uh, aproveitar esta oportunidade para a enfermeira demonstrar e pedir que as mães ou os familiares também praticassem aquilo que é a massagem ao bebê, explicando normalmente os seus benefícios uh, de, destas práticas como uma das formas também de reforçar este, este aconselhamento em desenvolvimento da primeira infância. Next slide, please. Portanto, este aqui foram alguns dos cartazes que foram uh, uh, melhorados uh, uh, durante a, a oficina de cocriação. Uh, na altura, os, uh, 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 o que foi acrescentado foram as falas uh, em que a mãe e, e a provedora, neste caso a enfermeira, pode orientar uh, durante este momento de contato pela pela após o nascimento. Uma das falas aqui que uh, apresenta vem o provedor a dizer mãe, dá boas-vindas e acarici o seu bebê que acabou de nascer. Então, uma das falas pode ser que a mãe diga bem-vinda, minha filha, eu sou a tua mãe. Então, como alguns dos exemplos que pudessem estar patentes para reforçar este aconselhamento. Next slide, please. Outro cartaz também que foi uh, uh, melhorado nas oficinas de cocriação como uma das soluções viáveis para reforçar o aconselhamento a nível das maternidades foi no período da amamentação, onde também foram acrescentadas nestes cartazes as falas para reforçar esta necessidade de interação e conversa, quer com a mãe, assim como uh, uh, os pais, se porventura estiverem também uh, a acompanhar a sua a esposa na maternidade. Então, estes, estes cartazes uh, uh, reforçaram, neste caso, aquilo que é o aconselhamento em desenvolvimento da primeira infância, principalmente nesta componente de aprendizagem precoce. Próximo slide, please. Uh, e o último, último cartaz também que foi melhorado, como vimos na, na terceira componente da, 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 da solução para melhorar o aconselhamento, foi a necessidade de uh, explicar às mães como fazer a, a, a massagem. Estes cartazes uh, anteriormente não tinham esta uh, apresentação e durante as oficinas de cocriação foi uh, necessário padronizar, numa, de seguir uma sequência lógica das massagens que devem ser desenvolvidas, não se esquecendo, porém, em que em todas as fases estar acompanhada de falas, de conversas entre a mãe e o seu filho. Então foi uma, uh, uma experiência muito uh, valiosa, porque foi sugestão das umas das provedoras ainda nestas oficinas em colocar-se as setas, por forma a orientar os passos das massagens, da massagem recém-nascido e, e alinhado aquilo que é a orientação pela qual uh, é realizado o exame físico. Next slide, please. Então, em relação aos resultados, comparando aquilo que eram os dados uh, desde a linha de base até o final do estudo, como podem ver o gráfico aqui, houve uma melhoria acentuada no na, na aconselhamento em relação ao desenvolvimento da, da, da primeira infância, porque na maternidade, como tinha visto, não tinha assim muito ênfase em fazer a estimulação, principalmente nessas componentes de uh, uh, estimulação precoce e cuidados responsivos para uh, as, as crianças. Próximo slide, please. Next slide. Aqui também uh, estes dois gráficos, o primeiro gráfico é em relação àquilo que uh, foi o reporte das perguntas feitas aos provedores, uh, depois de eles terem se beneficiado de serviços nestas maternidades, como por exemplo, se a enfermeira aconselhou sobre como falar com, com o seu bebê. Então estas aqui foram as respostas das, uh, de, de, 
a esta questão que foram realizadas pelas uh, mães, neste caso, as cuidadoras. Numa linha de base, uh, as, as respostas satisfatórias eram de 35% e no final do estudo houve um aumento para 85%, então mostrando uma evolução muito positiva. Em contrapartida, o, o, os outros dados em relação também uh, o que que se a enfermeira aconselhou a mãe a fazer a massagem ao bebê, na linha de base tinham uh, 41 das respostas positivas e no final do estudo uh, esta uh, técnica foi bastante uh, verificada uh, a nível destas unidades sanitárias que foram incluídas no estudo. Próximo slide, next slide. É para conjugar aquilo que são as respostas positivas, aqui eu vou partilhar algumas das, uh, das palavras com que uh, durante as, entrevista, as entrevistas feitas aos provedores. A uh, primeira referiu que a enfermeira ensinou que o bebê reconheça a voz da mãe e do pai e é uma forma de demonstrar amor, então foi uma das Uh, uh, informações partilhadas aqui durante as entrevistas por algumas das mães que fizeram parte do estudo. Outra mencionou que devemos falar para a criança ouvir e depois fazer tudo o que aprendeu em criança. Uma enfermeira disse que a criança em um computador grava tudo o que aprende quando é criança. E uh, temos também uma das informações partilhadas com outra cuidadora, que referiu que a enfermeira disse quando chegarmos a casa, temos que apresentar o bebê ao pai para reconhecer melhor, dizer ao pai que fale com ele e lhe dê banho. Portanto, foram estas algumas das informações partilhadas por forma que culminaram uh, uh, com aquilo que são algumas uh, das melhorias feitas no Job Aid já, já existiam para este aconselhamento por forma a reforçar este aspecto. Next slide, please. E como recomendação do estudo, uh, o Ministério da Saúde, assim como os, os parceiros, ainda vão continuar a reforçar aquilo que é a forma como os provedores recém-formados implementam o aconselhamento sobre o desenvolvimento da primeira infância na maternidade, continuar também a refletir a forma como o aconselhamento deve ser reforçado. Vimos que ainda não temos um, os dados, ainda não tem, nos, nos deixam tão satisfeitos para parar por aqui, precisamos de fazer vários testes por forma a melhorar este aspecto devemos desenvolver vídeos de formação que mostram passo a passo para ilustrar claramente as etapas do aconselhamento para que a aprendizagem seja realmente eficaz, temos que rever e validar o pacote de formação a nível central, este que foi utilizado neste, nesta testagem, neste estudo, e também, por fim, se não fazer formação aos dos formadores, aos principais atores do Ministério da Saúde, por forma a fazer uma intervenção a nível das províncias. Portanto, esta foi uma parte do estudo que viemos aqui partilhar sobre algumas melhorias para o aconselhamento a nível da maternidade e esperamos que das próximas vezes talvez partilhemos as outras melhorias que fizemos nas outras portas de entrada. Muito obrigada e era isso que eu queria partilhar. Next slide. Thank you, thank you so, thank you so much, Allah, for sharing that. Again, another example of how Mozambique was able to identify touch points, the maternity and delivery services, and and optimize it to be able to really um, link it with the early child development services and interventions. So, thank you so much for that. Um, um, presentation and uh, colleagues, the Q and A is still open. We've already received a number of questions. Some of them have been answered uh, in the chat. Um, perhaps to Ken, I'll uh, just uh, point out a few of the questions. So Ken, um, from the presentation that you made, uh, it was clear that the current MCH handbook use is very low, and uh, 
you already have some interventions that you are putting in place to try and raise that. But just from your perspective and the perspective of the team, what do you think are some of the reasons for that low coverage? And then we also have a question from Hila Manji. Perhaps you can uh, respond to that too. Um, is there any difference in expectation from the facility-based healthcare worker and the community-based healthcare worker in terms of the counseling? That question is from Sheila Manji. The first one is from Caroline Linda. Please scan. Thank you, Dr. Chabi. I, I think for the first question on reasons for low usage, just as has been mentioned, uh, the caregiver in this aspect, because they are not really involved in the use of this particular MCH booklet from the beginning, they presume that this is a book that should be used by the healthcare provider for recording this particular issues that come out, or it's supposed just to be used to monitor the number of visits that they make to the facility. But if there's that involvement of the caregiver from the word go, then uh, it uh, brings in some particular thought that they need to be utilizing this particular book moving forward and also to be able to monitor the developmental milestones for the child. On the bit about uh, counseling and uh, if at all there are same roles between the healthcare provider and the community health promoter, for the healthcare provider, he has the key role of number one, trying to look at uh, uh, the, this, the caregiver being able to follow all that is within the maternal child that has booklet. And they are given to it as a package because it has like what needs to happen all through the pregnancy period to birth up to five years. So then uh, that is a, a key role because they will uh, always make follow up on if at all all this is done because some of them are done on a periodic basis. Like for example, after delivery, there's the immunization bit, the the aspects of nutrition that have been uh, are continuous eh? and also child monitoring at different stages. But for the healthcare promoter, because their key aspect is to work at household level and give key messaging, they are supposed to especially make follow-up, if at all, the advice that was given at health facility on the maternal and child health booklet are being followed. And also to take the caregivers through on, uh, of course, early and quick identification of certain signs and symptoms that they presume to be danger signs that of course needs to be taken to facility level for, for further management. Yeah, so they have uh, different roles. One is a supportive role to what uh, the caregiver should be doing as part of the advice given at facility level. Thank you, Dr. Chabi, and back to you. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Ken. Um, Allah, I'll come to you now. Uh, there are a number of uh, questions in the chat for you. Uh, one of them uh, from Sherry Smith is, how was this location of the study decided and are there current plans to expand the training to optimize these three touch points to more facilities? And then uh, Sheila also asks, uh, first of all, congratulate the Mozambique team for identifying this simple strategy to be applied in the maternity ward. But her question is, are there plans to consider talking to parents about ensuring the newborn safety at home? especially remembering that uh, security and safety is one of the five components in the nurturing care framework. So Allah, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Chabi. Thank you, uh, obrigada, Dr. Chabi. Muito obrigada pelas questões aqui mencionadas. Uh, realmente, este é, é um dos resultados que nós já tínhamos dito nos próximos passos, nós vamos sim, uma vez que, como vem, são uh, uh, questões que basicamente podemos uh, uh, implementar a nível de outras unidades sanitárias, porque são uh, adições que, que, com uma formação e explicação aos provedores, 
facilmente podemos ter resultados uh, uh, positivos. Uh, realmente, nós, uh, depois de termos resultados, assim que de, de terminarmos todo o estudo, porque é uma parte das, uh, das estratégias que vamos uh, re realizar a nível da unidade sanitária, numa das portas, como eu disse, a maternidade, e tem outras estratégias de outras portas, mas esta em particular, realmente, nós vamos uh, fazer a nível do grupo técnico de desenvolvimento da primeira infância, Sim. identificar qual é a melhor forma de expandir este... Sim. 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 Uh, em relação à segunda questão uh, para preencher aquilo que são as cinco componentes de desenvolvimento da primeira infância, uh, integrados da primeira infância, realmente uh, nós temos que trabalhar uh, para, para uh, garantir esta segurança. Uh, nós sabemos que não só o setor saúde uh, é responsável por esta avaliação, temos a necessidade de trabalhar em colaboração uh, com os outros setores para ver como podemos reforçar por forma a que possamos integrar uh, uh, estes cuidados uh, a estas crianças. Obrigada. Doutor Chab? Um, Tendo, uh, there's a question to the uh, health system strengthening, you mentioned in the municipality. And the question is, if another maybe country or municipality wants to take up that kind of strategy. What would be your advice in terms of um, uh, lessons you learned that they can take up and the challenges that you face that you can uh, guide them to say, these are the things to watch. So what will be the challenges to expect and what are lessons learned that you can transfer to them? Over to you, Sindhu. Okay, thank you, Chabi. Uh, from our uh, experience, Leadership engagement is uh, one of the remarkable uh, achievement for this, the ECD scale up program, uh, because the city government mayor office are taken the program as their own program. So uh, health sector and the other implementing se sectors are only working their responsibility. So the ownership are guided by uh, the city administration mayor. So it is a big uh, approach for us and it is uh, important to implement this uh, program. And uh, maybe it's a lesson for other uh, countries because government commitment and the governor, government ownership is uh, a big, uh, supporting part for uh, the health sectors program. So early ch childhood development are a one political commitment for uh, the Ethiopian government. So that means uh, uh, all uh, political leaders are evaluating this by this ECD program. So they are, uh, they have responsibility to implement uh, their roles based on their structure. When we see from the county, when we see from the subsidy, or when we see from the health facility, their uh, their levels are they are uh, not only uh, footing or getting that position by merit. They are uh, they are political uh, assigned person. So one of uh, the strategy is political uh, commitment person are taken this responsibility are. It is uh, their duties and their uh, responsibility. So this is this is endersome for other countries. Uh, of course, uh, the other thing is uh, the government, Ethiopian government, especially city administration of Addis Ababa, are allocating the ECD program budget on the tre treasury budget. That means. The MSH program is one of the backbone for the health system, but the ECD program are directed by, by their own director. That means they have their own budget code. They have their own treasury budget allocated in the planning. So it is a lesson for in the supporting, uh, supporting issue for us. That is a lesson for other country and we can uh, or other countries can take uh, the lesson from uh, our experiences. Back to you, Chabi. 
or any other uh, question can I have to answer? So, thank you, Sindhu. Thank you, Sindhu. Let's first go back to Kenya. And there is a question about the costs and the financial implications, uh, knowing that the MCH booklet, the tool to develop, to distribute, is quite a cost. And the question is, are there, uh, are there uh, considerations for a digital version of the tool? So over to you, Ken. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chabi. Uh, I, I think the question on uh, uh, the cost and uh, the expense of it uh, is that uh, we have been having this uh, printed at national level. So this is something that has continued for quite a while and uh, is still continuing. So each and every, uh, each and every, uh, periodically we get the printouts from uh, national government, but also at county level there, we are currently also doing some printing and also with the support of the partners. But uh, just like uh, it happened recently in Kenya, there's the introduction of the Digital Health uh, Act. It has been assented to by the president. And within this particular act, uh, they're looking at how we can be able to improve or also digital some of these particular tools, especially to enhance data collection at uh, both community and facility level in a way that uh, it doesn't really delay decisions. It, is, uh, it will be like a real-time kind of uh, uh, data collection system. So this is something that is work in progress and uh, hopefully uh, digitizing the uh, maternal and child health booklet will be one of the key aspects that will be able to enhance e-health within the country. And this can be a plus because I know uh, digitizing it will have uh, certain advantages. Just like we have currently uh, gone through uh, uh, medical records where now we have the, uh, the EMR, electronic medical records. Uh, currently we have cloud EMR, so it's easier to be able to track patients the same way it will be easier to track the caregivers on some aspects of nurturing care for early child development. Back to you, Dr. Chab. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and I think we are running towards the end. We have a few minutes left, but there's one burning question to Allah. Allah, um, we know that there's guidance on birth companion, but again, there's also our culture in the region about men being allowed in the delivery rooms and the our infrastructure, this, the the way the health is, the health facilities are uh, arranged, organized. Uh, has has that been a challenge in inviting fathers to the uh, to the to the facility? In your presentation, you mentioned that they are invited at the time of discharge. Uh, for that uh, uh, counseling as a couple, what has been the exam? The what has been the experience on that, Allah? Over to you. Obrigada, Dr. Chab. Realmente este foi um desafio porque como podiam ver nas imagens as nossas uh, 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 são abertas, normalmente é composta de uma sala de parte e outra onde normalmente essas mulheres estão uh, lá uh, depois do parto. Uh, o envolvimento do homem, alguns realmente devemos que nós pusemos a ele, muitas das vezes uh, foi aquele conjunto, quase na preparação para alta, em que elas já estão mesmo. Elas Aqueles que acompanham as mulheres normalmente, como eu diria, são as senhoras, que muitas das vezes têm um familiar. Esta abordagem que as, as, durante a consulta pré-natal de levarem seus maridos para também acompanharem esse Acompanhar estas mulheres até ao parto e nessas unidades sanitárias, mesmo que não seja 
dentro da sala, onde normalmente são outras senhoras, pode-se arranjar um cantinho para explicar uh, os pais, neste caso os homens. Então, é criado homens Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so, um, Beatrice, uh, you wanted to add some uh, information on the answer to Sheila Manji on the distinction between the facility and the community healthcare workers. Proceed, please, Beatrice. Thank Introduce you. Yourself, please. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Chabi. My name is Beatrice Soyugi. I lead Path. Uh, Kenya Early Childhood Development Work. I just wanted to give some clarity on a question that was raised by Sheila Manji around the different, different roles played by the different cadres of staff. In this aspect, we realize that these two cadres of staff, the community health promoters and the clinical providers, all play very important yet complementary roles. And so what you are able to do through HC or human centered design is to identify what opportunities exist for each of for each of these cadres and just realize, you know, look at the realities. For example, the clinical health providers, what is the health system like? They are, they are, they are stations of work with all competing tasks. And so you are able to identify what activities they can just introduce and what community health promoters can reinforce at home during their routine household visits. And looking at you know, the opportunities that exist, you realize in the looking at the context, community health workers are visiting caregivers and meeting them in a natural environment and are able to promote practical activities that would promote their caregiving you know, uh, practices. So just you know, uh, staying alive to those facts, the solutions that we co-created took into consideration all those differences. And so we could identify that a healthcare worker in this aspect should only introduce or validate what a, CH, a CHP is doing at home. And that those are taken care of. In the SOP that Ken had uh, shown, you realize that the different tasks are, are you know, uh, assigned to different cadres of staff in that aspect. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Beatrice, for that additional information. Uh, participants, thank you so so much for staying uh, on for these uh, three interesting uh, presentations and for really engaging asking for clarifications for questions coming up with recommendations much appreciated uh, i will hand over to Dejit to summarize this session Dejit, over to you thank you very much dr chabi and thank you panelists thank you participants for your attention as well as for the questions that have been raised uh, one thing which I just wanted to reinforce and which just as, as, as someone who has been invested in this work makes my heart swell is just seeing how invested our colleagues in government are. These are not three pilots. These are projects. These are programs. These are health system strengthening initiatives led by government. Government is taking the charge and we are simply supporting it. So seeing their encouragement, their enthusiasm, and being able to support that has been such an honor for those of us who have worked with our government colleagues. We hope that the lessons learned from these three case studies are relevant to other countries who may have joined this particular webinar. As a reminder, the recording uh, will be made available in a few days' time once we have processed the recording so that others who may not have been able to join because of, of the time zone, which is not conducive for many folks outside of the African continent, so that they can listen to it later on because we do feel that the lessons learned are very valid um, and germane to other settings as well. As a reminder, there are multiple such webinars taking place with all the excitement and enthusiasm around the nurturing care framework. Um, there's there's a, a webinar I think that's taken place um, on the 4th of December. It's a child health task force 
that's hosting it. Our colleague, Catherine Kirk from USAID, who's been a champion for ECD within USAID, will, I believe, be facilitating that with case studies from three um, three countries, um, including, I believe, Burkina, Ethiopia, and one country I can't quite recall. But uh, there are many, many such webinars coming up. So please do keep your eyes peeled. If you do see an opportunity, sign up for the webinar. And hopefully you'll be able to use some of these skills, um, see some of these skills, be a champion and ensure that we're able to deliver comprehensive nurturing care to the youngest kids, enable them to reach their developmental potential, their full developmental potential. Thank you very much and have a great day, everyone, and a good rest of your week. Asante Nisana. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.